Hey, Retcon Raider here. Today we're taking our first look at Varnhold's Lot, the uh, second official DLC for Pathfinder Kingmaker. This one's a bit different than the first DLC in that uh, rather than adding to the main campaign, it's essentially a standalone secondary campaign focused on Magar Varn. That's the uh, Mayor of Dunsward that we met back in Episode 18. Although this story is largely self-contained, it runs simultaneous to Acts 2 and 3 of the main Kingmaker campaign. We will be seeing a few familiar faces, including Silverleaf himself, but for the most part, the story will be focused on Magar Varn and, uh, more importantly, Retcon, our heroic pony-summoning monster tactician from the original beta series. At any rate, we've got a lot of ground to cover, so... Let's wrap up the intro and get this started. There are some stories that resemble the last fleeting beam of sunlight as the sun sets in the fog. It gleams and disappears, leaving perhaps a bright trace in someone's memory. One such story is of a town called Varnhold, and I, an author still unknown to you, shall convey it in every truthful and exciting detail. And so it begins. Lords and ladies, today we are here to honor three brave people who have done the impossible. They've tamed the stolen lands. Baron Hannes Drelev, the new master of Glenabon, Captain Mager Varn, the conqueror of Dunsward, and finally, the tamer of the Shrike Hills, who put an end to the atrocities of the Stag Lord's bandits. Step forward. On behalf of the people of the free city of Restov, I confer upon you this noble title. Rise, your grace. Step forward. On behalf of the people of the free city of Restov, I confer upon you this noble title. Rise, your grace. Thank you, Lady Aldori, distinguished guests. It is a great honor for me. It is with the greatest joy that I announce the founding of my barony in Dunsward. It shall be called Varnhold. But I must say that this happy event is not mine to claim alone. The stolen lands would never have yielded to me if it weren't for the valor of my friends and companions. Now I would like to introduce my right hand, a hero without whose help I wouldn't be standing here now. Please, step forward. What do you mean you don't remember Retcon being at the coronation ceremony? He's right there, talking to guests and everything. It's fine, you probably just overlooked him. Anyway, let's see what he's up to. Today we raise our cups to Varnhold. I only look forward to the day that we raise them once more to celebrate an independent Rostland. So, you're the famous Retcon. I'm pleased to finally meet you in person. Varn has told me much of your deeds. The Varnling host fought for your interests many times, but we haven't had a chance to meet in person yet. It's a pleasure doing business with the Varnling host. You offer honest sword for honest gold. You do charge a fair amount, but this means I won't have to worry about someone else buying you out from under me. Alas, not many mercenary teams can boast your reputation. What do you hold for the future of Varnhold? I only wish I knew. 
we live in a wild time of great changes. The rise of new states and disputed lands will be a shock to the entire region. Of course, I have my own thoughts and plans, as everyone does. But there's only one thing I'm sure of. There will be no risk of a boring future. Allow me to return the question. What do you think awaits your young barony? Ha! Huh, that's an easy one. New victories and new glory. Just as your commander might put it. Well, I sincerely hope your optimism pays off. Why, thank you, Lady Aldori. I wish you luck. It is high time that Varn and his people were rewarded for their many feats. I'm glad the moment has finally come. <laughs> Rootless upstarts. Well, a pleasure to meet you as well, Baron Drelev. It is done. Natala Sertova gives you a cool but mildly curious look, as if you were a peculiar animal at a zoo. Retcon, right hand of Magar Varn, hero of the legendary Varnling host. They say your courage is only matched by your ingenuity. Is this true? And every word of it, the honest truth. The Varnling host are the best swords for sale this side of the inner sea, and I am first among them. Bold words, but you've proven you're capable of putting them into action. Your commander is certainly courageous, but doesn't think clearly about certain matters. He's bluntly refused to take envoys with him, as if he thinks his young barony can survive without allies. Do you think there are reasonable people in this new baron circle who understand how important diplomacy is for the state? Natalia Sertova, as, uh, charming as always. Do you mean spies and traitors? I'm sorry to disappoint you, but there's no one like that among us. I see that you are a perfect match for your leader. Well, I can only pray that Varnhold thrives in isolation from the outside world. But in any case, for now, this is just empty rhetoric. Your young state must first prove that it is worthy of diplomacy. I suspect we shall revisit this conversation in a year or two, if, by that time, the name of Varnhold can still be found on the maps. Lovely. What do you think of today's reception? I suppose Lady Aldori and Lord Mayor Salemius are very happy with this affair they've managed to plot behind my back along with their new toy baronies. Honestly, I should remind them who rules Bravoy and call an immediate end to this entire farce. Do you know why I haven't? Because it would have been a terribly obvious and crude response to Restov's maneuverings. On the battlefield, you wouldn't seek to do the very thing that your adversary expects and has been preparing for, would you? But I assure you, sooner or later, we will make our move. Just not today. I see. What are your thoughts on the future of Varnhold? You're addressing the ruler of Bravoy. I don't guess anyone's future. I determine it. But as for Varnhold, truth be told, I am still thinking about what to do with you. We'll see how you deal with the lands you've received. I must go. Have a safe journey. I wish your barony happiness and prosperity. Well, I certainly appreciate your candor. From mercenaries to barons. Well, there are some noble families with even humbler beginnings. Why, thank you, Chandra. It's nice that someone has a sense of perspective here. My friends went ahead, but I stayed to chat with the heroes of the Varnling host. Who would have imagined that you've accomplished so many feats? I hope someone makes a song about you, too. Ah, Lindsay. In another world, we could have been staunch companions. Not this one, though. Building houses, setting hearths, and turning wastelands into bountiful fields. These are all pious acts. 
May Arastal aid you. Inspiring words from the Slayer of Dargut Droon. Varnhold it is then. I'll be curious to see what you managed to build there. I might even pay you a visit sometime. No, please, don't go out of your way. Don't even start. This is... No, no, and no. You have no idea. Say whatever you want, but I will not tolerate... As guests linger and entertain themselves, one hero of the occasion stands aside. Magar Varn, the leader of Varnling Host, your direct commander and, henceforth, the undisputed Baron of Varnhold. He's busying himself with one of his favorite pastimes. He's trying very hard not to yell, but he's ferociously arguing about something with the party's co-founder, a wizard named Cephal Laurentis, Varn's oldest companion and his most uncompromising opponent. But, Varn, my dear friend, would you please be so kind as to explain what devil take you you've been doing? I financed this venture with my own personal funds, not to mention all the effort and time I've invested. And pray tell, what was it all for? For you to assemble the fruits of our labors and pitch the whole lot down the privy? Fruits? I've been busy guarding these fruits from Brevoy's incessant fruit moths. But I'm a baron now. We finally have our own land. For the first time in our lives, we're independent. No one can tell us what to do. And you want to destroy everything we've achieved by inviting spies into our house? Of course! Why not? Please, do come in, eavesdrop, sniff around, take whatever you please. Cephal is generous. He said, make yourself at home. Oh, Asmodeus, please give me the patience to withstand this nonsense, or take my soul already. Varn, what are you saying? What is this independence you speak of? We depend on Restov for literally everything, from the inflow of settlers to the food to feed them. I like Jamandi no more than you do. But it will take us years to free ourselves from her influence. Right now we must bow to our patron, brag about a title we receive from her very hands. Listening to you is disgusting. Did we claw away our own piece of land, only to keep toiling away for all those... Ah, friend! You're right on time. Come, be our arbiter. Of course. What are you arguing about this time? At issue is the fact that Jamandi Aldori has generously offered to Magar the use of her envoy. And who is Jamandi Aldori? The very same one who created our barony, and who could make it disappear with a flick of her finger. An insignificant figure in the grand scheme of things, no doubt. But Gudvan refused her. And to top it all off, he rather suggestively hinted that he considers every single one of Brevoy's diplomats to be spies. What else should I consider them? Cephal, have you grown foggy in your old age? I can hardly recognize you. You've always been a hardliner. You've always put the interests of our ventures above everything else. And now you want us to roll over on our backs for the Aldori, wiggle our tails, and wait to be petted. We're an independent state now, and we shall have it known to all that we won't be ordered about. Magar, Magar, of course they're spies! You refuse the spy in plain sight. Congratulations, well done. Now the Sword Lords will send other spies, ones we won't even be able to see. Restov has invested a great deal in our barony. He is ready to invest yet more. So why bite the hand that feeds us before the feeding is over? We could at least pretend to be humble, so long as we're still getting something for it. Well, for one thing, that's low. By accepting Restov's handouts, we're taking on certain obligations. I know you don't care a fig for morality, but think of our reputation. Who will want to deal with us if we steal from our employers and stab them in the back? Why do you keep saying us and our? Do I need to remind you that you're a baron now? That is the difference between you and me. You were born of a noble family, and yet even now, after receiving lands and power, 
who continue to think like the leader of a band of thugs. But I, my parents plowed the soil, and I learned to read by moonlight. But even as a snot-nosed child, I tried to think like a ruler, a king without a kingdom. After decades, my plans and schemes are finally bearing fruit. I shall not allow you to destroy everything we have created with your stupid pride. I don't understand why you dislike Jamandi Aldori. She's a fine person, and there's nothing wrong in being her ally, in word or in deed. Allies? You mean vassals. Jamandi keeps singing about freedom and independence, but that's only because it's the legal loophole she's using. In truth, she doesn't want Varnhold as an ally. She wants Varnhold as a puppet. For once, I will agree with you, Mega. And you, my comrade, do not be so naive. Jamandi is no friend, not to us. Brevoy is on the verge of civil war. When she sends us to die for her ambitions, she'll more than recover Brevoy's investment in us. If you know this, then why would you kowtow to her? You may be an old fox, but she's no little sheep. You think you can deal with the devil, take what you want, and then slip away without paying? Exactly. As Modius is my witness, I know more about deals with devils than you. In fact, I am accustomed to playing the devil's role myself in deals of this sort. All right, enough arguing. What is done cannot be undone. You spoiled my game quite a bit, Magar, and I will not forget it in a hurry. We shall try to play with the hand we were dealt. Celebrations are over. It's time for everyday life. I suggest we exchange bows with the respected hosts and set off to Varnhold. We have much work to do. Let's go. Varnhold awaits. If we had a Brevin envoy with us, they'd be spying out the road to Varnhold for Jamandi. As if Jamandi best not learn where we live. If there were an envoy with us, I would already be feeding them misinformation. Are they coming? They are. They're coming. Hail, fighters! Hail, your grace! Varnling host, my eagles! I have promised for many years that I would lead you to victory. And now I have. You are a mercenary party no more. You are my personal guard, the best of the best. We will never fight for others' gold again. From now on, we fight for what's ours. The soldiers fall out, and only Curdy Eisbach remains, looking as gloomy as ever, despite the universal jubilation. The sullen dwarf is quartermaster and chaplain of the Varnling host, famous for her skill in dampening the commander's enthusiasm. Welcome back, Your Grace. Did you have fun at the celebration? Have enough to eat? Good, then let's get back to work before you squander the whole barony. You should have gone with us. He would have liked it. I hate Restov. Besides, while you were at the hall, another bandit gang slithered into town. And who would have taken care of it if I weren't here, huh? Anyhow, the festivities are over. You're a baron now. Get to baroning. If you say so, to baroning. Here's my first order. I shall appoint you, Curity, as treasurer. You, Cephal, will be my regent. And you, Retcon, my general. Any questions? No? Then get to work.
Well, General, here's your first order. Talk to Curity and pick three of our lads as your brothers in arms. I can't spare more than three for now. Someone has to guard the capital. Take the best, whoever will follow you to hell and back. When you've gathered them together, come find me at the fort. There's something I need you to do. At once, Your Grace. It will be done. All right, time to assemble our party. Let's go find Curity and uh, get this taken care of. Those are the uh, default party members, but they're essentially blank slates. They're basically pre-generated characters with no unique dialogue or special input in the story. If that's how it's going, then I might as well just make my own. Curity Eisbach, formerly quartermaster and chaplain of the Varnling Host, now treasurer of Varnhold, greets you with a curt nod. Over all the years you've spent in a party with this no-nonsense dwarf, she's only smiled three or four times, and never when she was sober. So, you finished celebrating? Had your fun? Then let's get to business. My gut tells me they aren't going to let us live peacefully in this land. We're lucky to have a resourceful person like you on our side. Of course you are. Without me, you'd all be paupers. But why are you sucking up to me? You after the beer in my stock? I'm not pouring any today. Don't get your hopes up. Oh, Curity, you're as cheerful as always. What's there to be cheery about? Of course, a barony is a profitable venture, but do you have any idea what it's like to be treasurer? The quartermaster's job was a thorn in my butt, but this one is more like a wyvern's claw. Or a whole wyvern. An entire wyvern? I need the help of a priest. Why does the father of creation still tinker with us fools? Mark my word, someday his patience will end and then all of us will be finished. Fine, you can buy any scroll you need from me. I'll read it. Just don't imagine I'm going to run after you outside the city. When you go off on the march, you'd best take a cleric with you. Well, all right then. I want to take someone from the team on a raid. I would recommend Gekor, the Bruiser, and Tahara. It's a waste when such a strong priest and fighter, who can tear enemies to pieces with his bare hands, is stuck patrolling the streets. And Tahara, that insolent mug, I'm afraid to keep her cooped up in Barnhold. What if she starts thinking too fondly of the good old times when she was a pirate? No, I'd rather make my own choice. Right, our people are no good sitting in a fortress getting fat. Alright guys, I have to check my notes and uh, assemble our party. This is going to take a while, so let's skip ahead to the point where it's already done. We will take a closer look at our new party members a little later, but... For now, I just like to keep things moving. And we're back. We've picked up our new recruits, we've got everyone properly equipped, and uh, I think we're just about ready to go meet up with Magar Varn and get this show on the road. First up, let's take a quick look at our new party members. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but... Uh, we will at least run through some basic introductions. This, of course, is Retcon himself, our heroic monster tactician. In another world, he was the slayer of the Stag Lord. Then we've got Cephal Laurentis, the left hand of Magar Varn, and the uh, surprisingly evil regent of Dunsward. That uh, might be a problem. Then we've got Magar Varn, the hero of our story. I'll admit, I uh, didn't picture him as a rogue, but it takes all types, I suppose. Brother Olaf, cleric of Caden Kalian and Retcon's staunch drinking buddy. The shape-shifting druid, Erangel Morningstar, and her saber-toothed furball, Kyrus. And Avaros. He's complicated. But he's good in a fight, and uh, that's what really matters. Anyway, let's get to the fort and have a chat with Magar Varn. Uh, 
Oh, and uh, before I forget, special thanks to Valenrook, Laura and Mike, and Drakith, who submitted those three party members over on my Patreon. Sadly, we only had three slots, so that means there are a couple of people who didn't make the cut, but uh, hopefully I can find some way to make it up to them in the future. Alright, let's start with Seppel over here. Hello, hello. Come in, sit. I am a little busy just now, but I can make some time for you. You are not bothering me over nothing, are you? We've fought together for a long time, but I still don't know much about you. Where are you from? People know as much as I allow, which I grant is little. However, a person is defined not by their past, but by their actions. The way they behave when faced with danger and temptation. How they hold up under pressure and how they spend their leisure. After our many years together, you know me better than most. As for my homeland, it is of no importance. They do not miss me, and I have no longing to return. Tell me, how did you end up in a party of mercenaries? Ha! I did not end up in one. I created it. I sold everything I had and combined my efforts with a certain hot-tempered young man set on advancing his humble glory, as much as I was set on increasing my humble savings. As you can see, it was a successful venture. However, I often still ask myself if it was the best decision of my life, or the greatest error. Indeed. You and Magar constantly argue about everything. How did you manage to bring the Varnling host to victory, despite the discord? By a miracle, no less. Varn is a natural tactician, able to turn defeat into victory with a single maneuver. But strategy, long-term planning, politics, the words are meaningless to him. How many times has he won a war only to lose the peace? How many times has everything we paid for in blood somehow ended up in someone else's vault? Anyway, do not pretend you are a passive bystander to our arguments. Whatever we discuss, you always have an opinion, do you not? You both defend your opinion so ardently that you often overlook things. Quite right. You often point out something that allows both of us to see a problem from another angle. But let us be honest. Regardless of the point of view, Magar Varn and I commonly arrive at opposite conclusions. What do you think about the Barony's prospects? I am none too hopeful. At least, not until Varn gets his head straight and starts learning to see things like a politician, not a brawler. The experience of our shared ventures does not reassure me. Need I remind you how we hunted the noose, that infamous witch? Ah, was that the time we defeated a cunning and powerful enemy, using three dozen goat horns and a bucket of phosphorescent paint? It was the time you decided we should rely on a cheap masquerade as a strategium, ambushing a witch after making the entire party look like a horde of horned demons. I refuse to believe there was any logic behind this. However, Varn's initial plan was so ridiculous that it could hardly have been made any worse. Using a party leader as bait, risking havoc in case of his death, it was completely insane. And that sums up Varn. He is capable of great insights and bright ideas, but he risks too much and has no sense of consequences. I cannot vouch for the fate of Varnhold if he does not rein himself in. Well, food for thought. I have to go. Yes, you and I are both busy people now. What a joke, to be advisors to a baron who is doing everything in his power to destroy his own state. All right, let's uh, talk to someone more cheerful. Magar stands half turned to you. There is tension in his pose, though he only stares into the distance. Without turning, he begins to speak. Retcon, you're right on time. We need to discuss the incident at Dunsward. 
and about a thousand other things that have come crashing down on us, along with the Baronhood. How are you coping with everything crashing down on you, along with the title? Just think of it. I am now a Baron. That's right. Your Grace. Magar smiles through his gloom. I thought after so many years of leading the party, more responsibility wouldn't be a problem. And I was right. I'm not afraid of responsibility, but I'm afraid how little freedom I have left. Our wild exploits are over, Retcon. Of course, I can still steal some time to swing my sword around. But we'll never get back to how it was before. Remember that adventure in the Three Valleys on the border between Rossland and Dysia? When the new switch and her rabble were practically ruling the region, and the Sertovas made it a point to do nothing, waiting for the Aldori to make their move. Jamandi did the wise thing then, and sent a team of mercenaries, that's us, instead of her own warriors. But we, we definitely didn't do a single wise thing. <laughs> you remember whose idea it was to use me as bait? Of course, it was mine. When would I ever get another chance to see my commander bound and gagged and packed in a big box of rotten apples? Don't you start that again. Those apples were quite fresh. After several hours in that box, I knew the smell quite well. I still can't stomach apples. Or even drink cider. But yes, it was an insane plan. Of course, we could have listened to Cephal, waited for the scouts from Galt, and watched while more and more people went missing. But time was running out, and the noose was building shrines to demon lords practically out in the open, and doing whatever she pleased. She must have been the most elusive enemy we've ever met, a witch with an incredible talent for conjuration and illusion, and with almost animal cunning. We tracked for over a year, and never caught up to her once. But we were right about the plan. To make her drop her guard, we had to make her feel like the hunter, not the prey. I was the prey. We figured she'd be well distracted by the commander betrayed by his own people. And sure enough, you were able to seize the wretch. You know, I never told you, but for a moment there, I wasn't sure I was going to make it. I was all tied up, lying in that stupid box, and then on the altar. All the while, wondering whether you'd ever show up. Would you have enough time? But of course, I never expected what happened after that. I could just assume you'd jump out of the ambush and capture the witch before she had a chance to kill me. I could just as well imagine that you'd make a mistake, arrive a moment late, and my life would be forfeit. But in the name of Caden Kalian, the one thing I could never have imagined was a horde of horned monsters, howling in a hundred voices, pouring down from all directions. But then I looked more closely at their leader and recognized my loyal assistant, and indeed my future general. I couldn't have been happier if you were an angel come down from the skies. Ha <laughs> ha, good times. Let me ask you a question. How is it that you're not sick to death of arguing with Cephal? You've done it every day for years. Megar smiles coyly. It's a well thought out strategy. No, I mean it seriously. I've seen firsthand that the best way to rule is when one person makes the decisions and has the responsibility, but lets everyone else speak and tries to hear them all. No one is perfect, Retcon, especially mercenary captain Magar Varn, who somehow became a ruler for no good reason. As long as Cephal is with me, as long as I hear him contradicting me at every tiny step, well, I won't risk convincing myself of my own infallibility. Of course, there's another side to this. Making decisions nowadays means drowning in endless arguments, and governing is a competition in finding out who's the biggest idiot. That's why you're so important to me, Magar adds, much more seriously. Without you, Seville and I would end up acting like fools, because we wouldn't be able to stop arguing at the right time. Is it alright that most of the time I want to give you both a good beating? Someone to talk to doesn't hurt either. Without that, I'd go mad, and Cephal would end up so exhausted he'd have to retreat to some hermitage to honor Asmodeus in the silence of the oak groves. Oh, I'm joking. But still, you do bring harmony to our trio. At least a bit. 
though our troop is never the most harmonious. Why, thank you, Magar. What do I need to know about the incident in Dunsward? There is a place in my dominions called the City of Hollow Eyes. Until recently, it was considered quite a peaceful and harmless place, despite its name. But something strange is going on there. Our scouts have reported that centaurs have attacked the locals, and a gang of cutthroats is wandering in the area. It's a good bet that the centaurs and the bandits were uprooted by something else, something dangerous, or perhaps they're drawn to the place by something precious. One day, I will certainly become a decent baron. I'll sit on the throne, sip wine, and grow fat. But before that wonderful day comes, I hope to add a few more pages to the adventures of the Varnling host. So, if you're ready, General, say the word. I'm ready to stretch my legs. Of course, Magar. I am ready to set off to Dunsward, and so are our people. Are you sure? It's your call, but I'm going to ride you hard, just like in the good old days. There won't be time for daydreaming, or replenishing supplies. Let's go. Everyone's ready to get back on the road. I like that attitude. Let's go. It's time we had a rest. We just left Varnhold, so we obviously don't need rest, but uh, this is obviously an opportunity to memorize our new spells and reset our daily abilities. It also gives us the chance to uh, set up our camping screen. Though, uh, at a glance, it looks like just about everyone's in the right place already. Okay, I think that's fine. Let's get some rest. People always invent such creepy names for old ruins. I bet when the Cyclopses were alive, they called the place Goat Smell Walk or something of that sort. I highly doubt it. The ancient Cyclopses, after all, had far better taste than you. There were complaints about merchants disappearing in this area, along with their goods. We should look into this. Alright folks, I think this is a pretty good breaking point for the episode. We've uh, made it all the way through the introduction, and I need to get our formations and taskbars set up before we can actually go adventuring. Now, I can't promise that I'll be putting out new episodes weekly, but I do plan on continuing this series. I do actually find the story more interesting than I was expecting, and the uh, choices we make will actually have consequences, which will carry over into Silverleaf's campaign. Anyway, we'll hit the pause button for now, but we'll pick up here next time, as we continue the adventures of Magar and Retcon. See you then. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Pathfinder Kingmaker, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official YouTube channel, the official Discord channel, the fan-run wikis, or the original crowdfunding campaign over on Kickstarter. As always, links are in the description.